I'm Maureen and I'm going to talk about my experience during the lockdown periods. I must say that at first I was a little bit gung-ho about it all because I'm from Northern Ireland and I was there during the UWC strike so I kind of thought I have seen worse than this. I have gotten through worse than this. So I was a little bit confident, I suppose, or overconfident about how I would get through it. But of course, we none of us knew how long it was going to last or how many people were going to be affected or indeed how we were going to deal with it on a very personal level when, for instance, I'm a practicing artist and my sort of calendar of deadlines and hopefully commissions and applications etc my diary just emptied so there was a kind of months and months of blankness in front of me and that I must say that came as a shock so it felt on a personal level the the challenge was um, how am I going to sustain anything like a practice during this period of time so my living situation here in Folkestone is I have a live workspace. So I live in this part of the building and right beside it, or, or sort of part of it, is, is a workshop. Formerly a stables, but it's, it's now a workshop. And when I, when I moved in, I discovered that the claim for it being fully powered, for example, meant that it had one el- electric socket. And there was some light, but not very much, and there's no natural light. So I think that I made a conscious decision that I needed to think about and believe in a future, that I was okay with the solitude, I was okay with not having a social life. All of that I could deal with, but I needed to sort of somehow invest in a future. So. Long story short, I I made an application for some funds to CCADS, which was Southeast Enterprise Creative Industries or something, and I got some money from them, which which had to be matched, and so I took out a loan, a a bounce-back loan, um, in order to match the funding. So I felt quite pleased with myself that I'd managed to find a way to, to invest. So I got the workshop fully wired up so it's got proper lighting i got a a sink put in for for sort of you know sort of dirty work and what else did i do at that point anyway the studio come workshop is is a much more functioning building now and the and the process of doing that was psychologically very good for me because it was in my way of looking at things, investing in in the future. On a day-to-day level, I started cycling again and cycled not very far, (laughs) just down to the Lees, but I'd cycle over there and lay on one of the very many benches, one of the great features, I think, of of Folkestone and the Lees is all the benches. So I'd cycle over to a bench and have a sort of afternoon doze on a bench and just enjoy the, the, the air and the sounds. Unlike many locals, I love the sound of seagulls <laughs> because I've never lived by the sea before so it really reminded me that I was living by the sea which, which I thought was wonderful. And then I also I had a very beat up old car, still do, well not the same car but still a beat up car, but I drove over to Hythe regularly to just to buy some groceries, some treats, because suddenly dinner was the highlight of the day. And I found myself thinking during the day about what I was going to have that night. So like many people during that time, I put on some weight. But I I enjoyed cooking and thinking about, you know, what I was going to have and tried to eat as healthily as I could. So I was aware that I needed you know, I needed vitamin D, I needed fresh fruit and vegetables. I probably didn't need quite so much wine, but, you know, that was helpful. That became a little bit of a routine. Oh, I love that part of the coast, I meant to say, just driving from here, you know, through Sandgate and along that lovely coastline. That also was just a lovely thing to do. 
and again just reminded me of where where I am living now because I'd moved in in 2019, so the timing was bad, but I was still still enjoying the fact that I was living you know, by the sea. And, and also, of course, that little run was keeping the car ticking over. So it was kind of, you know, it was kind of, I realise now as I'm saying it, a mix, a mixture of practical and psychological strategies to get through it. And that's what it felt like, something that I had to you know, I had to get through. I didn't get COVID, which I'm terribly pleased about because I know a lot of people who did and I'm aware of the impact that that had on people and their families. And I'm also aware of a few people who have long COVID, which is horrible. Uh, So I feel very lucky in that respect. And I felt very lucky. I felt very lucky to have access to vaccination that felt important to me and I took advantage of it. On reflection, it was okay. You know, I didn't have a bad pandemic. I just had to pull on the resources that I think, you know, I've built up over my lifetime, really. As part of trying to maintain a practice that I volunteered with Kent Coast Volunteering, who did a call out for creatives to get involved with their anthology project, which was led by a coordinator and artist herself, Katie Murray, who's a ceramicist. And she, the, the, the anthology project was based on the idea of the, their client base, who are people who are mostly elderly and isolated anyway, so very much so during this period. Katie had sent out creative challenge packs which invited people to submit photographs, poetry, examples of craft maybe, anything that had that people were turning to for uh, distraction and comfort during that time. I thought that I might be able to offer something in terms of installation. I was particularly interested in photographs that people might take. So we included a disposable camera in the in the packs and asked people to take photographs of their home, you know, to look again at their home and to ask themselves questions about whether it was a sanctuary or or a prison <laughs> you know just to do what art does is ask people to look again and and look closely at their surroundings and to take photographs that reflected some of those ideas so we also collaborated with a printmaker called Sam Kappel or Capel I think his name is and or at least I think that's how you pronounce it and uh, he printed screen printed the photographic images onto, we bought a stack of just plain white domestic tiles because a lot of people had sort of done some DIY during that period. So it was including the idea of, again, of looking at your surroundings and the fact that plain white tiles are very blank unless you do something interesting with them. So long story short, again, we worked with some tile fixers, you know, people who worked with tiling, and they helped us to put those tiles on the front of Lee's lift. It had to be somewhere outside, it had to be somewhere with almost a blank page that would be visible, but, you know, not involve close contact with people. So there was a bo- there's, there's still a blackboard up in front of one of the windows, and we, we, we tiled that board with with the tiles that had been screen printed. And again, it was about both, you know, some themes in my work about memory, about the things that shaped us. And a lot of people in Folkestone hold Folkestone Lee's Lift in very high regard. It's a very iconic building and it's the source of many happy memories and memories of family and just better times, really, or at least in people's minds, better times but also forward-looking because Lee's Lift has a Heritage Lottery Fund 
project or a funded project to reinstate and re- restore the, the Lees Lift. So it was about, again, investing in future, thinking about the future and, you know, happy times ahead, different times, but, but happy. So that was something that I'm very glad I did. I mean, it's not the best installation I've ever done, but I think it's very much of its time. And it kept me thinking about what, what my work is and why I do it and, and how I do it. I suppose I just think, looking back, that of course it was a terribly challenging time. And, you know, I'm glad it's over and I'm glad I get, got through it. And, you know, we, hopefully we may never experience that again, but hard to tell, isn't it? I mean, I drew on my resilience and I knew I had that and I still do. But I still think that I'm sort of coming out the other side of it a little bit, you know. I'm, I don't think that I've completely emerged from it, whatever I mean by that. I'm not sure what I mean by that because, you know, after experiences like that, it's terribly difficult to define what normal is again and terribly difficult to refine or or reinvent yourself. So I guess I feel I'm still going through that.